made this video in response to a question by James Games Music, another YouTuber, and he's got a Canon 600D and wants to use wireless flash with it. What I'm pointing out here, this is a Canon 600D model you can see on screen, is that there is a master or commander mode built in to the onboard built in flash. As it happens I'm using the AV mode, you could use manual or program, it doesn't really matter, but let's hit the menu button and then on the first tab here we've got a range of options with the flash control at the very bottom. So I'm going to select that and have a further look at the options available. So the flash firing is enabled, we want the ETTL metering, evaluative or average, personally I just leave it on evaluative all the time, and then in the built-in flash function setting we have the options for controlling the external flash. These are the three options you can have. Normal firing is for the built-in flash. Easy wireless will give you an automatic um, ratio between the built-in flash and an off-camera flash. And custom allows you to set it yourself. Flash mode, ETTL or manual. Well, ETL, ETTL is just simpler. And then the wireless function, we have three options. One is um, onboard flash plus separate flash with a ratio. The second setting is for triggering the wireless flash without any output from the onboard flash. And the final one is to have both the onboard flash and the separate wireless flash both firing without a ratio setting. Now, I, I think I'm right that James wants to use the wireless flash without the onboard flash, so this is the option we would use. You can change the channel, as it happens the uh, channel 1 is the uh, standard setting, but if you're working with other photographers you may need to change that so there's no interference from your flash gun to theirs. And then for your firing groups you can have all of them or the A and B groups. I'm going to choose all. And finally you can choose exposure compensation for your wireless flash from here. Uh, again, unless you need to, just leave that alone. But if you wanted a particular effect this is where you would do it simple, just choose whatever you want. Um, exposure compensation can be useful if you're wanting just fill-in flash for example so that it's a subtle effect rather than looking too obvious as a flash. Um, we're now done. The only th other thing I would have to remember to do is to pop up the built-in flash let me just show you that, prior to taking any shots. Although the pop-up flash is uh, ready to go it will only be used to send out a pre-trigger to the slave flash to make it operate. I'm going to show you the settings now on the Olum 662 which works as an off-camera TTL slave flash for both Nikon and cameras, uh, both Nikon and Canon cameras. Okay hopefully this will still make sense even though the flash gun is on its side. So let me switch this on and it's currently in the manual setting as you can see. Uh, if I change the mode I've got channel 1, group A for Nikon cameras. If I press the mode again, it's now set to be wireless slave for Canon cameras. And I previously set channel 1 on the Canon 600D and it's group A. So that is now set, ready to go. The only other thing I would need to do on this is change the zoom setting to whatever is appropriate. Yep. 50mm or whatever. And then this camera is now ready to go. And when I fire with the cannon, what I will get, let me just show you the flash control button again, is a trigger which makes the wireless flash fire but doesn't add any of the inbuilt flash to the photo. Now, as you can see on the front of the 660 Mark II, there's a flashing red light. That just indicates that it's in slave mode waiting for the wireless trigger signal from the commander camera, which in this case happened to be the 600D. Now this isn't going to be the most inspiring of photographs, but what I'm trying to show you here, if I just move the um, wireless flash, is that this will trigger uh, and when you see the photo close up you're not going to see uh, output flash from the onboard flash gun on the Canon. What you will see instead is directional lighting from the left hand side, hopefully. If I need to take a couple of photos, I'll do that. So let me take that now. Oops. 
And then what I'm going to do is change the settings. Uh, if I can show you, I will do so. And I'm going to uh, have the onboard flash fire at the same time. So you should see a difference right, when we do this in terms of the... I wonder if I can capture it like this. Let me see. Probably not. Uh, but you will see a difference in terms of the actual lighting. So let's have a look. Now I'll put close-ups of those two images on, on screen for you. And I'm going to make one final change. I'm going to use a ratio on the flash control. Let me show you that. And here at the bottom is where we set the ratio between the onboard flash and the separate wireless flash. I'm going to make a big difference uh, by going to the 8 to 1. And I think you can go to 1 to 8 the other side, or is it? One? Yeah, okay. My mistake, it only goes 8 to 1 to 1 to 2. But anyway, I'll explain that later. So I've set the 8 to 1 ratio here. So let me now take another photo and we'll see what the difference is. And the differences may be subtle, but you'll see those coming up on screen. If you have any questions, please ask me. Um, but basically, the Olong SP662 works as a wireless slave flash in TTL mode with Nikon and Canon cameras, and the Canon 600D is lucky and fortunate to have a built-in master or commander mode. So you don't need a separate flash gun, and you don't need a separate controller, which is great. Okay, so I'm going to explain um, the differences in the flash setup there, just so that it might make more sense. The first image you see here was taken with the wireless flash on its own. That's the flash on the left-hand side that you saw earlier. And that gives a directional lighting, and if you look at the pattern on the case behind the watch, you can see how every ridge is showing very clearly. Now, the next picture, the one that you're seeing now, is the one when I added the on-camera flash, which effectively fills in uh, another part of the material so that you get a more even uh, distribution of light but you get less of a, a glancing light so what you see is, is less detail and the pattern is not as pronounced whether you want that effect when you're taking pictures or you want the previous effect you'd have to make a choice for yourself but what you've got is the option using the on-camera flash and a wireless flash to change how texture is revealed and that sort of a thing and particularly with uh, portraits the type of lighting you use will make a difference for a man you would probably use a more dramatic lighting so that's the previous image which I'm going to show you again now and that's where it will reveal the texture and so on but if you were taking a picture of a, a girl or a woman you'd probably want a more flattering lighting uh, which is more even on both sides so there's less dark and light as it were um, if we look at the original picture again which is on screen now you will see the shadow behind the watch on the material is very pronounced. Now I'll switch back to the second shot, and that's both flashes, remember? You'll see that the shadow is not as pronounced because we've got light from two different directions. So the on-camera flash is sort of filling in that shadow area. The whole point of this is simply that if you have an off-camera wireless slave and you use that uh, you can control how the lighting will appear if you mix in some of your on-camera flash. So you have a couple of different options there. But the 600D gives you those uh, facilities because it has the built-in uh, master or commander mode. And something like the Olum uh, SP660 Mark II, which I think was about £65, uh, which would be about, what, $98, something like that. That is a very good off-camera wireless flash. The only disadvantage with the Olung SP660 is that you can't use it on camera as an ETTL flash gun. It is purely manual if you use it on camera, but off camera it becomes much more capable, which is a bit weird, but for the price, to be quite honest, it's an extremely good flash gun. And you get nice coloration and all the rest of it. It's quite powerful. Uh, you've got the diffuser and, and so on, but you can see the previous 
uh, reviews that I've done for more information on that. So I hope that helps, James. Let me know if there are any further questions. And for everybody else, I um, hope the information was useful to you too. While you're here, why not subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and uh, if you've got any questions or comments, add those as well, please. See you again. Bye now.